We're at the Wallace Collection in the heart of London, home to some of the world's most iconic portraits. Twelve artists are preparing to take part in a very special art competition. And their talents will be truly tested. They face a heady mix of celebrity sitters, strong-minded judges and a time limit. So, who's got what it takes to become the next Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year? For the past five weeks, we've been travelling Britain and Ireland in search of outstanding artistic talent. In today's heat, 12 new artists are preparing to compete for a life-changing prize, a £10,000 commission for the Scottish National Portrait Gallery. My self-portrait took me like 100 hours. So about 25 times longer than you've got. But with just four hours to complete a portrait, they have to impress our judges. Award-winning artist Taishan Schurenberg, Kate Bryan, Head of Contemporary at the Fine Arts Society, and independent curator and art historian Kathleen Soriano. This one just, it's not for me, Ty. It's just not doing it in, in amongst the others. But who's bold brush strokes? You're going to do the hair? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a general idea, yeah. And perfect portraiture. This is quite an exquisite drawing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> will secure them a place in the semi-final. What about that awful dog? She'll want her money back, won't she? <laughs> Our 12 artists are about to test themselves against the clock and in front of large crowds. It's a time for steady nerves. I think what I'm most worried about is not getting the drawing right. I'm concerned about the timing, obviously, but I suppose everybody is. I think I'm just worried about how much I'll get done and also about capturing the right likeness. I just want to get going now, actually, see if it's a hit or a miss. The judges shortlisted today's artists from digital copies of their self-portraits. This is their first chance to see the originals. Is it different seeing these now when you've only seen them on a computer screen? They're texturally all very different. It's very exciting to see them after having just seen the digital image. It's a completely different experience going from the screen to the real thing. So what do we think about this first one? Well, I think this is an example where it's uh, even better in the flesh for me personally. The lovely thing he's also done is he's taken costumes, so he's made it much more interesting than just himself. Yeah, we don't know for sure that this is a costume. This might be his everyday apparel. It, it may well be. <laughs> oh, I was really looking forward to seeing this one. It does not disappoint for me. Well, I think this is potentially one of our winners. winners. Yeah, I love it. So, it just really stood out on the day when we were judging. Because what she's done is she's taken that sort of photorealist style and sort of made it much more her own. Definitely. It's not sort of um, pat. The energy is so compressed. I mean, of course, the colour in the background is very strong as well. It's funny, when you put them next to each other, that one, it puts this one slightly to shame. Yeah, it suffers slightly. Yeah. Maybe that's also interesting, that she's not engaging the yeah. viewer. And we experienced so many of these younger painters applying with the selfie and, you know, the very dramatic makeup. And, yeah. you know, and actually this has got something really paired back. It's just quite engaging. I just like the mood. The well, that's, that's the exactly naivety. Yeah. The naivety of it, I think, is charming. I'm hoping that she's just going to be this brilliant, naive painter and yeah. really yeah. surprise and impress us today. Well, this style is quite contemporary yeah. Yeah. and very collectible. You know, I was going to bring practically nothing. And then at the last minute, I think, oh, well, maybe I just need that. And maybe I just need that. So I've got pretty much everything I own with me, actually. Rebecca Hathaway has studied portraiture at Heatherley's in London for three years, so she's confident in her approach to today's challenge. I'm going to prime the canvas because I don't want to work on a white canvas. I'm going to make, and I'm going to do that with acrylic because it dries instantly, and then it's dry before you know it, and then you can paint on it without it, you know, getting involved in. 
Professional artist Emily Tull from Ramsgate has been working with material and thread for six years. Her set of tools is entirely different from those of the painters. I have my, my tailor's chalk, lots of scissors. I've kind of organised my thread <laughs> into colour tones. Emily, I can't, I've just been looking at your self-portrait. I can't believe it, it's so unusual. <laughs> it's, it's woven. Yeah, it's hand-stitched, yeah. It's hand-stitched and, and yeah. not paint, no. but, but silks. You've invented this? I, I guess so. I, I mean, there's a few people that do do stitching, but they paint as well, so um, I'm the only one that I'm aware of. We've hung all the self-portraits in the gallery. It gives our artists their first chance to study the competition. I'm glad we didn't go any lower. <laughs> <laughs> Retired architect David Thomas is from Yorkshire. Today, he's the only artist using watercolour. I feel that watercolour is very much undervalued, generally, and particularly for portraiture. So I'm very glad to have an opportunity to show what it can do. Really nice. So this is water coming. Yeah, gorgeous. Is that water coming? No. Why are people so good? The next important question, who will be today's sitters? I'm hoping for someone with quite distinctive features. If they sit still, then they're a good sitter. Someone really craggy. <laughs> Your sitter today is one of the country's best loved writers. And if you ever thought the countryside was boring, you should read one of her novels. Please welcome Jilly Cooper. <laughs> Jilly Cooper began her career as a journalist before writing more than 50 novels, including the international bestseller, Riders. Hello. Jilly, oh, welcome. Darling. How lovely to see you. Gosh, how lovely to see you. Can I, uh, Yes. Pretend yes. I'm a gentleman. There you go, <laughs> lovely. Do you always travel with the painting of a canine? Oh, this is Feather. This is Feather, my greyhound, painted by a friend called Ros Berriman. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. Please welcome Lord Melvin Bragg. With a career in broadcasting spanning more than 50 years, Melvin Bragg is an award-winning programme maker, presenter and author, and is a passionate advocate of the arts. Now, my first question to you is, how are you going to sit still for so long? I don't know. That's been worrying me. I've been practising and I've got to four minutes so far. Your sitter today is a member of one of television's best-loved families. Please welcome Ben Brockman, better known as Daniel Roche. At just 14, actor Daniel Roche is already a familiar face. He plays Ben Brockman in the highly acclaimed sitcom Outnumbered. Please sit. Cheers. So, have you, have you sat for a portrait before? Never. No, it's my first time. Excited? Worried? Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of edgy about falling asleep, to be honest. Just well, that's OK. We can yeah. paint you slumbering. Yeah. Today, your pose is going to be set by Kate Bryant. Well, so we want something which is comfortable for you, and this looks like you've really yeah. won out with this. Well done. Where, where should I look? Sort of straight ahead, or what? Where does it naturally feel? Not about there, really. About, about there. there. yeah. About there. I'm very strict with my sitters. I don't know how these painters will react to you moving around. Um, but I think as still as possible will be good. Gosh. Gosh. Can we chat? Yes, <laughs> that'd be very interesting. <laughs> as long as you keep your head in the right okay. same direction. Okay. Artists, I hope you're ready. Sitters, I hope you're comfortable. You have four hours to complete your work, and the time starts now. One of the challenges of producing a great portrait is to capture not only a likeness, but also something of the character of the sitter. I'm just um, getting my first sketch down um, and just trying to get the likeness that 
you know, to start because I think it's important to have a good foundation. Abby Skinner is studying illustration at Bournemouth University, where she always tries to incorporate portraits into her work. This is quite an exquisite drawing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's really nice. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. With your self-portrait, it is structured around the drawing of the... Uh, yeah. So how are you going to transfer that onto the it's, canvas board? I'm transferring it right now. Oh, so you're I'm doing going, it? Yeah. Oh, really? oh, it's yeah, so I don't know how it's looking at them. It's probably a bit fine at the minute. No, oh, no, yeah. no, it's fantastic. No, 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 it's great. Yeah. Excellent, OK. And you're the only person with a clock there. I like that. That's very, <laughs> very well organised. Because I know what I'm like. Whether using acrylic, oil, thread, watercolour or pastels, most of our artists have a strategy. I'm going for a lot um, heavier base drawing than I would normally do with a pastel, just so I don't mess it up, really. <laughs> you can always hope you get a lucky break and it all goes well at the end, but it might just look like a real mess. That's it, really. <laughs> Here at the Wallace Collection in London, our artists are competing for the chance to win a £10,000 commission for the Scottish National Portrait Gallery. They are one hour in to the four hours they are allowed. The drawing is very is situated really nicely in yeah. your rectangle. Um, and he's also got a smile on his face. I know, I was really lucky to catch that. Before, so you want pictures. you want an express you yeah right. I wanted an expression because my angle isn't amazing I prefer being at the front yeah so um, catching a smile is good. Twenty-four year old Sally Dyer from Preston is a professional artist who supplements her income by working in a coffee shop. Your self portrait was very stark in the sense that you know you just your head against a white background and you s started with a white canvas yeah. here. Are you going to keep it? As graphic as your self-portrait, yeah, do you think? Yeah, I think I, I quite like that edginess to it. Tess. Hello. Hi. I want to start with the standard question. How's it going, do you think? Um, I think OK at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm kind of just trying to locate everything where it is and, like, general sort of tones and everything. 21-year-old amateur artist Tess Hanneman is studying philosophy at university, but is considering switching to a career in art. So you would normally take how long to do a portrait like this, would you say? My self-portrait took me quite a long time. That took me, like, 100 hours, but then I've... Okay. Definitely sped up since then. So about 25 times longer than you've got. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Good luck. Thank you. All the artists today have had their own motivation to paint, and none more so than IT worker Stephen Westwood. His self-portrait is a powerful reminder of past surgery. Now, you were, I think you were inspired, weren't you, to return to painting because, yeah. because you got cancer? That's right, yeah. And are, are, you, are you well now? Uh, yeah, four years now. But do you feel that you're now searching for that big theme again, or, or do you just think that it, that was the kickstart and now you're just going to be an artist and paint whatever comes? Um, I mean, if I could paint, and I, I would paint, but obviously, you know... You can paint. I... <laughs> but you would give up your day job. You'd like to be a professional artist. Oh, yeah, artist. of course you would, yeah. OK. Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, who knows? This could turn things around. Which artists are you sort of really taking inspiration um, from? Well, one of my favourites is Rembrandt. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, his brooding lights are always interested me. 23-year-old Londoner Chris Gray used to study 3D design, but now concentrates purely on drawing. Lots of people, I think, tend to think of pastel as being quite a quick medium, but I understand your self-portrait was about a six-hour. Yeah, I tend to um, build up a pastel over time, so I try to find the drawing as I'm drawing it. So is it not unusual for your work to start off not looking like you and yeah. then sort yeah. of suddenly emerge? Because yeah. you're 
Oh, I see. You kind of look like a human, and then you look a bit like a distant relative, then a cousin, then a brother, and then eventually, hopefully, you end up looking like you. Have you spotted anyone yet of whom you have high hopes? Abby, whose beautiful uh, sort of portrait here right. we, uh, caught our attention, it started a very, with a very, very beautiful and powerful drawing of Melbourne Bragg, and it's very sort of insightful. I'm just interested to see how she's going to progress with that. And um, in, in my bit with Jilly Cooper, Stephen, who did a, a painting, a self-portrait from obviously from a photograph, I thought he was going to have problems, and he's done a very delicate, sensitive drawing under, and he's just started painting Jilly. And I think is it's that wonderful. the one that's very soulful? Yes, yeah, she's a real amazing. soulful Fantastic. mood. I'm also really keen to see how the portrait of Melvin develops with the textiles because I think yeah. that could be very, very stunning, and I'm sure we'll only see that come together towards yeah, the very end. Yeah, the 11th hour. And what about you, Kate? Actually, I'm really encouraged to see two people who are both painting Daniel, the younger sitter. One of them um, is someone who I thought wouldn't be as good as she is, which is Sally. I think she's really delivering a really kind of intense piece of work. Mm -hmm. But I, I, keep, I can't take my eyes off it. I really hope it becomes something great. And that actually surprised me. And the other one is Philip, who's done this gorgeous sort of Renaissance monochromatic yeah. study. Philip Morgan is from London but is currently studying 1920s German art in Berlin. I'm pretty pleased so far. So I've got the likeness pretty good. Um, I'm just laying some sort of groundwork on to sort of the light and dark now. So Kate Daniels pose and it says to me, sort of, you know, classic, moody, disconnected <laughs> teenager. Is, is there more to it than that? Actually, exactly as you say, because he's a teenager, we wanted to get that sense that he's occupying is completely his own world. Yeah. In this way, we really thought we'd focus on him being, um, you know, a, a teenager. The country seen him grow up and outnumbered. Yeah. And so we wanted to sort of capture him in this moment in time at the age that he is. Yeah, it works. Now, you did the setting for Melvin Bragg. What is it represented here? Well, we, Melvin's had such an incredible life with the arts and with culture in general. We sort of tasked him with thinking about who, if he could have a wonderful dinner party, he would want round the table with him. Um, and he chose some of the most important icons to him, that the people who've influenced him, his thinking, and that he's find the most inspiring. Quite a lot of the people doing the pictures have not incorporated this very rich background he's got. Mm. Does that matter to you? Uh, the background is there really to give them a context, because some artists really want that sense of narrative, that sense of story. I think if it were a completely blank background, it would be harder for them to negotiate, really. But it doesn't bother me that it's not there. So, what is the philosophy behind uh, Jilly's pose? In Jilly's house, she's got a big, a two a drawing rooms. One's blue and one's orange. And we thought, you know, orange is an interesting colour. It's, it's a bit of a challenge for the artists. I don't understand the, why orange is a challenge. Orange is a warm colour. Yeah. Warm colours tend to come forward, cool colours like blue go backwards. So, in a sense, we put a warm colour behind Jilly, which is very difficult to keep behind her, she, you know, it wants to come forward. So the danger is that she might get lost in a warm yeah, yeah. colour, whereas a, bl a blue would naturally separate. Yeah, and her. create a lot of space, yeah. OK. Annabelle, now before we talk about this portrait, there's an even more important portrait, isn't there, today? That you had a bet with your physics teacher? Dr Taylor, yes. That you could get a, a selfie with me. So let, let's do that first, because it's all about portraits, isn't it? <laughs> 
At 17, Annabelle Adams is the youngest artist in the competition. She plans to study medicine at university, and she's hoping her knowledge of science might give her an advantage. I really like the idea that your science informs your art. Yeah, I, re I really like science. Biology especially, it's you observing and it's so different from looking. I think art taught me so much for science. Oh, really? Yeah, because um, you get asked surprisingly a lot to draw, like, insides of hearts, eyes, all the, all the fun stuff. So it's a bit like the way that, that classically trained artists would study anatomy before they did painting, I guess. If, if you can look at um, a, a face and kind of know what's behind there, that Yeah, like that you can help. see the kind of bone structure and the sort of the mandible and things like that. Oh, yeah, I love a bit of mandible. <laughs> Halfway through the challenge, and the judges are already foreseeing some likely disagreement about who will go through to the next round. We're going to have at least uh, four or five works that are going to be that we'll be arguing over, yeah. basically. As to I can see some arguing to today because it's just too diverse. At the Wallace Collection in London, the artists have been painting for more than two hours. Their techniques range from the very traditional to much more modern. You've got Melvin sitting here, and here's the canvas. Why do you need to refer to that? Because he fidgets. <laughs> Does he fidget? I knew he would. No, he's actually he's fine. So what, what, it's but just... what's the idea? Well, I can refer to Melvin and that. But then you see, I can I can sort of enlarge it, so it gives me a better idea of what's going on. Former print worker David Vigo has been a professional artist for the past two years. It's pretty good, isn't it? Are you pleased? It's, yes, I've hit my targets that I right. set for the drawing and then for laying down some colour. Right. And then start. And then what's the next target? Uh, finish. <laughs> <laughs> Artists, you are halfway through your allotted time. Um, I want you to finish the hair and get the shadow like on the forehead and the shadows of the hair. I think that will make a real difference. Like, so much to do and still, yeah. I'm going to do everything around him, like, but leave the skin and face till last. I think just have one last push at the end. I've really struggled with the background. Oh. You've got plenty of time, don't worry, don't panic. <laughs> drink something. What do you want to drink? Oh, I'd have a cup of water. I'll have some water. What about that awful dog? She'll want her money back, won't she? <laughs> Well, I can't believe this. Uh, not long ago, and after a lot of work, you were still drawing. Yeah, it took me long For an hour, thought. at least, yeah. drawing. Very slowly yeah. and meticulously. And now it, it's beginning to be transformed by... This is what paint is this? Acrylic. This is acrylic. Right, just yeah. one colour so far. One colour so far, yeah. I'll build it up slowly. I think now that I've got the drawing done, it'll be a lot easier, but... It's... I've still got to make the form of the face and with the colours, so... But all the fun. trouble you took with the detail of the drawing, so that's your underpinning, yeah. you're relying on that. Exactly, yeah. Well, I won't take up any more okay. of your time. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Not only are the artists under the scrutiny of the judges, our visitors to the Wallace Collection are also following their every brushstroke. I don't think I'd be able to produce anything as good as these guys, but I think that's part of the fascination for me, that I, I physically can't do it. Do you think you've picked a winner? There are two, but I'm particularly keen on one directly behind us. Um, very subtle, absolutely beautiful. And there's one just around the corner, um, which, again, very subtle, taking its time to kind of come forward, but it's really beautiful. See, one of the things I like about it is that there's very little staring in normal life. You don't get stared at because it's impolite. No. But you, 
it's good to see people really studying mm. yeah, you. Absolutely. And everybody, it's a terrific sort of joyful atmosphere, isn't it? Yeah, people, and people. you are absolutely the focus of attention, which is always good, isn't Lovely, it? Lovely, yeah. <laughs> Are you bearing up? Well, I'm having a really good time. I'm not just saying it. I thought it'd be a bit of fun to do, and it's fascinating because I'm faced by four backs of four canvases. So I don't know what's going on there. And you I haven't made, had a, you no, had a sneak I'm, to look. No, I've met, no, don't I don't. No, I want the story to end on the last page. Well, you will be delighted when you step outside so. this charm circle and see their work. Well, Ray, you certainly leapt in. You didn't waste any time, and no time at all. There was paint all over this canvas. Yes, yes. You're a man in a hurry. Yes. Because painting's layers and layers and layers until you get enough layers to create a beautiful flesh tone. Raymond Gaston's destiny as a professional artist was predicted at an early age. And you were expecting to be an artist. I mean, some, didn't someone read your palm? Oh, tell, yes, tell yes. Tell me. Yes, oh, I was two and a half years old, and this old woman put me on the lap. My mother, of course, looked, said, excuse me, but I saw you reading the palm of my son. What did you see? Oh, I beg your pardon. I saw that your son is going to be famous abroad, not in this country, not in the Philippines. I'm now here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not famous as, yet. A, as an artist? Yes, as an artist. Well, good luck, Ray. Oh, and to watch it as it goes on oh, and changing. Yeah. Thanks yeah, thank very much. You. Do you paint yourself ever? No, I'm not painting. I'm a doodler. I like doodle, but never myself. I'd always like, love to be able to paint. I'm just not very good at it, and I kind of get frustrated if I see my own painting. But what a fabulous piece of TV it would be if you came back next series as an artist yeah. rather than a sitter. <laughs> One artist who knows the pressures of taking part in this competition is winner of last year's London Heat, Louis Morris. He impressed the judges with his painting of Juliet Stevenson and her son. And what do you make of what you've seen here already? There are some uh, clear front runners for me. And Which uh, ones? Um, well, there's one around the corner there where she just put one tiny little mark in for the mouth. All of a sudden, you've got a real sense of um, Jilly Cooper. What was the outcome last year? What was the consequence for you? My feet haven't really touched the ground in lots of different ways. People commissions? Are, there have been lots of commissions, but also people just emailing and, and saying they like my painting, which is really gratifying, and, and just people asking for advice. So. Do you think this is going to be hard to judge? It is. I, I don't envy the judges any more than last year. There's some really strong work. The paintwork on here is all very nice and loose. Are you going to try to get this right and then keep it loose? Just painting live, I think it just did naturally become okay, a bit okay, loose. Okay. So there's just movement and yeah, okay. the pose and stuff like that. Are you... How are you feeling about time? Are you on, I think...? Uh, I'm up against it, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, think you're I doing think all right, so. and you just you were just about to fill in a very important bit. So um, <laughs> okay. I'll get Jilly to sit very still, and then you can see what tone it is. Thanks. Thanks. Artists, you have thirty minutes to complete your portraits. Thirty minutes. It's finished. Um, I know I wouldn't finish it in this time, so um, it's going to be a case of that I feel that it's kind of as even as possible that I've got the most important, and then I feel that I've kind of finished it enough for today. And you've seen Melvin on television? I have. Do you feel that you've caught something of his character already? Um, I hope so, because I've, I've done it so his mouth is slightly open, as if he's talking yeah. to everybody about art. So I, I was quite careful of how I was going to have his... He's going to be so position. intrigued to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I think better than I thought it would. 
I need to make sure I don't overdo certain areas, though, which can be a danger, I think. Possibly try and blend his face into shadows a bit more. I'm doing the eyes again. I'm taking a photograph close up. I lift it out, the eyes as, as painted so far. Risky, this is. I've got to wait now for the paper to dry. Can't do anything until then. So that'll be 10 minutes at least. And then I'll have to do the eyes in the time remaining. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really hoping that I'll, I make it on time. Um, I'm just rattling through uh, painting the hair, which is thankfully you can be quite quick with and uh, expressive. I'm on track still, I think. I'm probably um, not going to fill in too much detail with the top and stuff. It's, I'm just focusing on, on the head, definitely. What do you think about your dad's uh, performance so far? Good. Um, no, it's when it's on the when it's coming together, you kind of worried, sort of thinking, yeah. how much time has he got left? Well, Is it's it very, like him it's a mysterious like process. It's very hard to tell what the final result. I know a lot of people just put the pencil down and then a little ten-minute rush at the end, and all of a sudden it looks like him. And yeah. I think we went for coffee and came back, and it looked like him. So I was like, oh, good. While David's son seems quite happy. Abby's dad is a lot less confident. It's touch and go at the moment, I think, yeah. She's not used to doing things in four hours at all, you know. She's more relieved to see some paint going on, because I think she's got a chance of finishing. She's had a clock sitting in front of her the whole time, mm. so she's clearly planned it No, out. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm, starting, I'm worried that we might end up by the end of the day saying she should have just done a really beautiful drawing. We're in the final 10 minutes of this heat of Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year. And some portraits still seem to be a long way from finished. I'm worried about the hair. What do you think? I Have you like given it. up on the hair? No, I like it just like that. Like Harpo Marx? Just like that. You're not tempted to just have a quick explosive go at the hair? No. Okay, I think I'm don't listen to me. Like what that. do I know? <laughs> In the beginning, people coming up and talking to me was uh, very welcome, but now it's not so welcome. You're going to do the hair? I hope so. <laughs> well, she does have whitish hair, so I thought perhaps <laughs> you, you were going leave to leave it, it like that. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the general idea, yeah. Well, I'm trying to sort of haul it together so there's no big, obvious blunders in it. You know, you just walk away and realize you haven't got any eyes or something like that, you know, because sometimes you just miss the obvious. Artists, you have five minutes to go. Five minutes. I think I've given it a good go. There's not really much more I could I can do, to be honest, so, yeah. It's kind of just playing around with it, I guess. Probably shouldn't be. Done. Otherwise, I'll ruin it. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your brushes and your needle and step away from your portrait. <laughs> the sitters now get the chance to choose their favourite portrait to keep. Well, Melvin, now you haven't seen any of these portraits. It's the great reveal.
Now, how do you feel about that? I think it's a terrific likeness. Is that where you see when you look in the mirror? <laughs> You're going to have to choose just one. I've got to get a move on, haven't I? All right. I think in the end I'll go for that. I'm so glad you like it. I do. That looks like my face. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's a definite <laughs> plus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll have to say this one. Oh, look, the amazing. So, shall we do the. Um... It was fine. Well, intelligent, too, didn't I? Yeah, and you know how <laughs> orange suits you. Yeah. I, would, uh, I would look into that. Oh, dear, how difficult. I'd like that one. Well, so. yeah. oh, well, I love the other ones too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm covered in paint. But it's a pleasure. The artists now have to wait while the judges scrutinise their portraits. I got to a certain stage, I got really excited about three quarters of the way through the day, thinking she's going to do it, she's going to do it. Yeah. And then I came along at the end and I thought, I was looking for that extra sprint finish and it didn't materialise. I don't think you can sprint with that medium. No. I stitched a lot faster than I thought I was going to. Halfway through, I was, I was really happy with how far I got. Now, this was a hot favourite for the day. The more I'm looking at it, the more I like it. I would have loved to have finished it, but I just I feel like I did the best I could do. It's a great spirit of youthful sort of naughtiness as yeah. well. It's wonderful. This blue works very beautifully exactly. against the face and it's just indicated. Yeah. I'm really pleased with it, yeah. I'm glad that I planned and I had it figured out. He'd caught something about Jenny just very quickly and it just happened and it was yeah. just absolutely right. I thought time might be an issue, uh, and it was. And I had to knock out the, the, the hair in like five minutes at the end. Before they can decide who will make it to the semi-final, the judges shortlist their favorite three. That's not a bad likeness. I, I, would, I, I think people would recognize Melvin Bragg from that. I just, this one just, it's not for me, Ty. It's just not doing it in, in amongst the others. But actually, I have to say, I wasn't sure about this one, but now I see it next to this one. This doesn't feel like neither a great painting nor a great portrait, whereas that, at least that is a portrait. The time has come to name the shortlisted artists. The first artist is... Emily Toll. The second artist is... Stephen Westwood. The third artist is... Sally Dyer. What about a big hand for our remaining artists? So happy to have experienced it and everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to perhaps entering next year or something fun. I've never actually painted anyone over about the age of 25, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think, actually. So that was a whole new experience. Just amazing. I'm really glad that this has actually happened to me. <laughs> it's great. To help decide who will go through to the semi-final, the judges ask each artist about their work. Here, with the side angle, mm -hmm. did that sort of... Did you choose that position on purpose, or...? No, I was seated there and I was a bit thrown, because I don't normally work from that angle, but it actually worked out really well. 
it's really hard. I mean, in art history, you can really name them on two hands, probably, people who are actually able to capture people in a form of expression without it looking like a caricature, and you've done it really well. Tell me about the hair. Yeah. You ran out of time, but? Well, I mean, the face is really detailed, and generally, I do do the hair very detailed as well, so I probably would have just gone in and gone for it with it, but... We I could knew. see you holding back. Yeah. Were you worried about I'm, the time? Or? Yeah, I didn't want to start it and then not finish it, so I just thought I'd just let the detail fall away. You've really caught um, Jilly's wistfulness and fra fragility. I mean, w was it conscious? I, I like the fact that she was quite fragile and quiet. You know, she wasn't uh, uh, confident, forward, or you know, laid back sort of thing. And I quite like that kind of wistfulness. Um, Would you have tackled the um, dog in the frame? <laughs> if I had more time, yeah. Uh, I, I think Jilly is quite likes her dogs as well, so that would have been, yeah. I'm quite surprised with how much I've managed to do in, in such a short amount of time. Presumably when you sat down, with, you knew exactly what sort of where you were going to position the head and the face. Yeah, once I'd seen the set out and uh, he'd been sat in the chair, because his head was quite enclosed in the top of the chair, mm. so I felt that he was head was going to go further down the, the canvas than I'd originally planned. Um, so he was quite tightly in the, the bottom part, because that's how it felt. And is it the head that always does it for you, rather yeah. than the context or the, the full um, figure? Yeah. The head. Yeah. But also, no, what, what I found interesting is about how the fabric becomes the fabric of the skin, the skin especially yes. around yes. here, the, yeah. eye, the eye, it worked very well. It's really nice to have that kind of critique from people, because you don't often, if you're locked away in a studio, you don't get that. To be honest with you, I wasn't even uh, thinking that I'd be picked for the final three because there's so many amazing artists. Um, that was a real shock. I thought at the time, even if nothing came of the competition, that I would take what they were saying and think about it. It was really constructive. After some very difficult deliberations, the judges have made their decision. Sally, Stephen, Emily, the judges have been very impressed by your work and it's been a difficult decision to make. The judges feel that the artist they've chosen to go through to the semi-final turned a disadvantage into an advantage and produced a characterful portrait. And that person is Sally Dyer. Really happy. I've never painted from that angle before, and that's what I was worried about, but actually it worked out really, really well. Physically, I am completely whacked. I'm so tired. Um, I'm just running on, on adrenaline now. Just overjoyed that I got into the final three. Wasn't expecting it at all. It's not sunk in yet. I'm still, like, replaying it in my head. It's just amazing.